Hello everyone, welcome back. Now we are going to show you a new ADC that is ADS Triple One Four. And to gain more knowledge about this ADC, let's proceed to controleverything.com. And here we have to search on for this ADC that is ADS Triple One Four. And let's see what we got here. And here we are with this ADC, and it's a 16-bit two-channel precision analog to digital converter. And there is a long list of features which is onto the screen and you can also purchase this ADC right from here. Also I will be interfacing the ADC that is ADS1414 with a Raspberry Pi and a software platform will be a Python code and to get your hands on the code let's go to the source tab and here we are with the Python code sample. Now you can download the Python code sample as a zip file right from here and also you can get the code from github.com and the concerned repository there is control everything community. Now let's have a look over the connections we need to put up together for the hardware setup. Well, in the hardware setup uh, for the connections, what do we require is this, a uh, Raspberry Pi, which you are able to see on my screen. And these are the GPIO pins of the Raspberry Pi. Next, we require an I2C shield, which you can see, and it's available on the website controleverything.com. The real reason we are using this shield is to make easier connections with other I2C devices. So for that, gently place the I2C shield over the GPIO pins of the Raspberry Pi and make a connection. Next, we need to power up our Raspberry Pi and for that we require a micro USB cable just like that and gently insert it over here, the power jack. And for the internet connection, there are two options. First of all, this here is an ethernet cable or a LAN cable. Now gently insert it over this ethernet jack and you are done with the connection part. Now, for the other internet connection, we can also have a adapter, a wireless nano USB adapter, just like that. And you can have on the USB port. Now, we need our ADC analog to digital converter that is ADS1114. And this here is a connecting cable. Now, make sure while making the connection among the cable and the ADC, the ground wire of the cable should be connected to the ground terminal of the ADC. And similarly, we have to follow this route for the ground terminal of the I2C shield. Now we are done with all the concerned connections for the hardware. Now let's have a look over the port. Alright, for the interfacing section part, first of all we need to log in to github.com and then we have to search on for the concerned repository that is controlled everything community. And then we have the ADC that is ADS1114 and here we are with the Python code. But let's look over the instructions part for this code. We have to download and install SMBus library on the Raspberry Pi and this link will help us to do the installation carefully and precisely. As you notice we have all the relevant examples, dependencies and commands to do that so. And after that we get back to the instructions part, we download the code onto the Raspberry Pi and this command will help us to run the Python code, note it down. Now as we are with the Python code, it's a .py extension file and in the Code, first thing you notice that we have imported SMBus and time libraries and we have the address of the ADC that it will be 0x48 and in the writing section part as you notice we have to select configuration register 0x01 and we are going to send a command that will be 0x8483 which we are going for positive end which will be AIN0 negative end AIN1 voltage range will be plus minus 2.048 voltage continuous conversion mode 128 sps and it is here the writing card command and then we have to read the data back from the resto for two bytes 0x00 and here we are with the reading command then we have the conversion of the data takes place here which you can see onto my screen at the very end we have the output data to be displayed onto the screen which exactly is the digital value of analog input so this is how the code looks like. Now let's see how it works. Alright, now let's have a look over the working environment. And in this part, in this part, we need to copy this entire code. And after that, we need to open up the terminal for the Raspberry Pi via internet. And here we need to create a new file as you are able to see on my screen. .py will be the extension. And here we need to paste the entire code. And after that, we have to save it. And this command as you are able to see on my screen. This will run the python file and let's put up the command and when we have the digital value of the analog input. When I run it again, we have the value and it's the random value because nothing is connected across the two ends of the sensor. But when I try to connect 
a cell that will be a double a battery of 1.5 volt and when I run the command we have the value of digital value of analog input onto the screen and it's coming almost constant because there is a standard cell connected and the voltage is almost standard uh, constant well so this is how the sensor works now let's have a look over the applications and some of the features the ADS 1114 is a precision analog to digital converter with 16 bit of resolution. The ADS 1114 featured an onboard reference and oscillator. Data are transferred via an I2C compatible serial interface. Four I2C slave addresses can be selected. The ADC 1114 operates from a single power supply ranging from 2.0 volt to 5.5 volt. The concerned applications regarding this ADC due to high accuracy analog to digital conversions are portable instrumentation, consumer goods, battery monitoring, temperature measurement and a lot more to mention. Well, you can have this sensor and you can purchase it from controleverything.com and you can get the code from resource tab. From this site, you can download the code as zip file. Also, you can get the code from github.com and the repository there is control everything community. In the end, I would like to make it clear that if you have any doubt regarding any part of this sense or video, you can have your queries on controleverything.com and you can post your comments on the community page on this website. For articles and blogs, you can have a look over on instructables.com and to subscribe more video tutorials like this, you can have a look over our YouTube channel. In the end, I hope you enjoyed this video and had a good one yourself. Thanks a lot for watching. Thank you.